Now, that's a, a piece of the battle. We, are, we will tell George, but I don't think he's going to be relevant by the time we tell him. Um, so that's a piece of it, but that's not going to save our lives right now. Because do you know, have, picture in your mind a wasp or a bee trap where the insect voluntarily goes down the, the funnel and then can't get up out of the trap again? That's codex. A regular law can be overturned, it can be repealed, it can be corrected by another piece of legislation. But once we become codex compliant in any area, as long as we're members of the WTO, it can never be repealed because we have lost the sovereignty to become uncodex compliant as long as we're in the WTO. So it's like going down that funnel and not being able to get up out of it. So it's very important that we make sure that we do not become codex compliant. But then we'll be hit with all those big trade sanctions and the country will be destroyed economically, right? No. Remember surprise? One of the principles of war? Remember mass, where you take your strength and put it against the enemy's weakness? Well, here's what we've done. We have a team of lawyers who have spent hundreds of hours with us pro bono. These are good guy lawyers. These two gentlemen and we have spent hundreds of hours studying codex, understanding its weakness says, weakness says, a lot of weakness says, and constructing a strategy which will take the sucker down. It will take it down. But I need you. You are people that other people come to for information about safe, healthy food and nutrients. You are ready-made dissemination points. You are the thousand million, hundred million points of light. Here's what is happening. Every country in the world has to be codex compliant in order not to get hit by WTO trade sanctions, as I told you, if they're members of codex in the WTO. And there are a few countries that are not, but I guarantee you they're not of any major significance. So, the question is, what does codex compliance mean? Well, most people, most countries, most legislators, believe that it means they have to adopt as their national standard on that particular subject what codex ratified. But that's not the case any more than we're in the WTO. That's not the case either. What it means is that the format, the issues, and the subjects covered by a, co a codex guideline, standard, or regulation have to be addressed in the country's guideline, standard, or regulation on the same topic. So. What we have done is create the first of many alternative codex guidelines. You can go to our website, www.healthfreedomusa.org, and you will see a little button on the upper right-hand side that says, Sign the Citizen's Petition. Now, to briefly digress, a citizen's petition is not like a grocery store petition that you sign and you bring to somebody and you say, I have 200,000 signatures and they dump it in the wastebasket, because in their mind, it's one signature, you and your friends wrote 200,000 names. No, it is a legal challenge to the policy of the United States government on codex. It's called a citizen's petition. It's a legal challenge. We're suing the United States government, saying what you're doing is illegal, folks. Let us tell you how. We want hearings of fact. We want Redress, we want correction. If we get what we want, that's dandy. If we don't get what we want, we have gone through a process called exhausting administrative remedies. We have made the case ripe for court. Okay, so I need you and everybody you know to sign this citizen's petition saying this is a bad policy. En masse, 
Man. And you do this on the, on the web, and you'll see the instructions, and, and we present the thousands and thousands and thousands of actual physical pages that we print out with people's signatures to the U.S. Codex Office and to the FDA, and, and they don't like that at all. Um, but that's okay. However, this time, this is the Second Amendment of the citizens' petition that we're asking you to sign. This time, the revised vitamin and mineral guideline is part of it. It's part of the lawsuit saying this needs to be U.S. policy. The more voices that say, this is what I want, and you work for me, Mr. and Mrs. Bureaucrat and Mr. and Mrs. Congressman, Mr. and Mrs. Senator, the more voices, the more weight. So step number one is read and sign the citizen's petition. Step number two is disseminate the information, the web link. Tell everybody you know. Put it out in your office. Get your patients, your friends, your neighbors, your suppliers to sign the citizen's petition. And your suppliers, the companies that you use, are going to tell you that you're out of your minds. They will tell you that Codex is not a problem. And they will tell you, any, anybody here have a dog? Okay. Dog owners know that you ask a dog to heal, sit, down, stay. That's Codex in this country and worldwide. Because the more people who are in Codex coma, the less trouble they have getting this through. So the NNFA, anybody here ever heard of the NNFA? Everybody. Everybody's heard of the NNFA. Did you know that the members of the NNFA are not just health food stores and manufacturers, but include companies with names you may have heard? Pfizer, Merck, Monsanto, Bayer, BASF, Archer Daniels Mid Midland, Kemet, Eastman Chemical, I could go on, Glaxo, SmithKline, Welcome, Wyeth, Arrest, you get the idea. Why? Because after Deshaies was passed and the nutrient business burgeoned, the pharmaceutical folks said, and they're not dumb, said there's gold in them our pills. And they bought the means of production of many, many, many companies, and they bought the companies themselves. So they're in the nutrient business. What better way to kill the nutrient business, which is not nearly as profitable as the toxic chemical drug business, than to take it over? Works every time, right? CRN. Anybody here know about CRN?